What's going on guys? I got my brand new gasket right here for the Raptor 700. But before I go put my stator cover on and throw in the, the, uh, the stator and everything, I actually want to test the stator and I also want to test the uh, crank position sensor, the little pickup that goes right outside the flywheel. Because uh, from what some of my subscribers are telling me and some of the research I'm doing online, it looks like those pickups go bad. So before I go throwing everything back together, I'm going to check those out and if they're bad, I'm going to order a, um, a new sensor and I believe they come with a stator anyway. So we'll just get the whole new assembly and throw it in there. So let's go ahead and check those now. Alright guys, so I have my stator right here and our crank position sensor right here. So the first thing I'm going to test is our crank position sensor and how we're going to test that is with these two wires that come out of the white plug and you can identify them by their colors you can see you have the blue and yellow and the green wire and right up here you can see those two wires are right there so first I'm going to check for continuity we'll just make sure that uh, the wires aren't crossed or anything in there and then I'm going to test the, uh, the ohms resistance okay so first thing here I'm just going to check for continuity so I have a multimeter right here you just want to make sure this is all set up you got your black and your calm and your red in our ohms voltage over here so we'll take our it actually really doesn't matter which way you go here either the negative or positive and I'm just gonna go right up on either one of these wire ends right here where it connects to the sensor and we're going to touch the corresponding wire in our plug and it will beat the way that we have this set it's right on sound I'll show you if there's continuity, it's going to beep. So we'll take our connector. First one we'll do is the green and white. I'm just going to stick our prong in there. You want to make sure you got good contact. And we'll just touch here. Oh, slipped off there. All right, so there's continuity there. And then you just want to touch the other wire too because you want to make sure that wires aren't crossed or anything. So there's no beat, no continuity. So that's good. Now let's check the blue wire. That one's good too. So we have good continuity. So now we're going to test for resistance. We're going to use ohms. So we're going to take our meter right here and just move it on to ohms. And I'm going to show you in the manual right here. The manual calls for 198, or I'm sorry, 192 to 288 ohms. So I'm just going to throw our pins in over here and also in the manual it tells you which one goes where. So the positive goes to the blue yellow and the negative goes to the green white. So we'll take our positive, get good contact in there, and then we're going to take our negative, put it over here, and you can see we're reading 239. 239 ohms. So that's within spec, the 192 to 288. So this sensor is good. The crankshaft position sensor is good. So now let's move on to testing the stator. Okay, so now we're going to check for continuity in our stator, just like we did for the crankshaft position sensor. So how we're going to do that, we're going to take our three-prong plug right here, and we're going to check for continuity between all three of these wires. All three of them should have continuity. So we'll take our multimeter and set it on the audible sound again for continuity. Take one prong, stick it in there, any one of them, and then touch the other one and it should beep. So that one has continuity, and that one has continuity. And then we'll just check these here. So all these wires have continuity, that's good. Now what I'm going to do is just ground this other wire while this uh, terminal is attached. Now, if there's continuity, that's bad. That means one of these wires could be frayed or something and it's uh, grounded out. So we don't want to hear anything. So just touch around. And if you hear a beep, that's bad. So I'm just going to try each one of these wires here. And it looks like we're good for continuity. All right, so now we're going to test the resistance of our stator. So... 
We'll go to our multimeter, put it on ohms again. Now right here you can see what the manual calls for. It goes for 0.248 to 0.372 ohms. So, and it says white to white for wires. Now all these wires are white in here. So let's see what we get. One point two, one point one. Let's check this one. One point two, one point one. Let's check these. One point three, switch these around. All right, so this is putting out way. It looks like it has way too much resistance. So this stator. I think the stator is bad, which is awesome, because that would explain why we're not getting any ignition. So I'm going to replace this stator, and it comes with a brand new crank position sensor too. But before I go ordering it, I'm going to check the rectifier also, because I noticed that these kits on eBay, they have kits that come with the rectifiers, so that tells me that that might be something that commonly goes bad on these Raptors. So I'm going to real quick check the rectifier right now. So the first thing I'm going to do is take this thing off. Oh, shit. Now before I test this on the bench, I'm going to take a Sharpie, and I'm going to mark on here which color wire goes to where, just so I know what I'm testing. Alright, so here's our rectifier, and you can see I labeled these pins, I have red and black, those are our power sides, and all of these were white, so I just put a W over here, so it doesn't really matter which one of these I'm, I'm on, it's just differentiating between the power and the ground. So what we're going to do is take our meter and we're going to set it to this mode right here and what we're going to do is go from the positive and the negative we're going to go to the positive first, the red wire and we're going to take our red this is the input side and then we're going to check our output side and what we're basically looking for is to see if the uh, readings jump around between these prongs so we get nothing Nothing, nothing. Now let's switch these prongs around. We'll put the negative up here. And now let's try this. We have 0 0.497, 0 0.504, 0 0.51. All pretty close, I don't see anything weird there. Now let's try the negative. Zero, zero, zero. Switch these prongs. Point five, point four nine five, point five oh six. So they're all close. I'm not getting like erratic readings or you know readings all over the place between those. So this is a good rectifier. Okay, so for you guys that follow me, you know that I'm not an electrical genius, and I'm also not a mechanic either. I'm not a professional mechanic by any means at all. I just love tinkering with things. I've been doing it, you know, really since I was, you know, eight, nine years old. I've always been building things and, you know, learning how to do stuff with my hands. I just enjoy doing that stuff. So I'm not a professional electrician or anything, but these tests, I feel like were pretty straightforward. I think I did them correctly. Everything was basically to what the manual said to do and a couple of YouTube videos that I watched and some forums and stuff. So it's pretty clear evidence to me that that stator is bad, which is awesome to me. I'm really excited about that because I'm going to order the stator, and I bet you this bike's going to start. I really have a good feeling about this. Um, but, yeah, it's always good to keep learning, guys, keep reading things, check over the manuals, and we're always learning. I've been working on bikes probably for, like I said, like, 12, 13 years I've been pulling apart quads and dirt bikes and stuff, and I'm always learning things. Like I said, I'm not a professional, but this is the first time I've ever worked on 
a fuel injected bike and uh you know granted it wasn't the fuel injection system or anything but i've never had an issue with a stator before so we'll get the new stator throw it in there and we'll see what happens so i'm going to order the stator right now i did get the gasket from the same company that i'm going to be ordering the stator from it comes with a gasket also so i'm going to have an extra gasket but whatever uh so yeah it'll be nice throwing the new stator in there it comes with a brand new crank position sensor I'll show you right here on the screen the one that I'm going to be ordering. All right, guys, so I'm here on eBay. I actually lied. I'm not going to be getting the stator that comes with a gasket. This one here just comes with the stator alone. It's just a cheapie. $55.99 is what it is, free shipping. And I think this is going to be fine. It's just a basic stator. And you can see here it comes with the crankshaft position sensor, basically everything I need. Even though my sensor che checked out good, it's still going to be nice to throw a new one in there. So there it is. This should be here within a week, and I think it's going to work just fine. I'm going to get those parts, throw this thing together, and cross my fingers. I really do have a good feeling, though. I think this thing's going to start up because we're, we're pretty much crossing every avenue here, every bridge to, you know, what this could possibly be. And now we'll know once this thing's together, there's absolutely nothing wrong with this quad. So I can't wait to get these parts in, guys. Thanks for being patient with me. I know this is taking forever. This is just one of those things, one of those projects that can really make a person look bad. I'm telling you, I know engines and stuff, but, you know, this one just had me stumped. And uh, we'll get it running, we'll get some riding videos, and then we'll move on to the next bike, keep the channel moving. I appreciate everybody who's watching and everything, following the channel and everything. Thank you for your patience. Like I said, I know this project has been taking forever. And, you know, it's not going to be like a Part 50 Project Raptor 700. Might be out of control. Probably just throw the thing out at that point. But, yeah, it's coming. It's coming, guys. So thank you. Please give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. I know it's a short one. Just want to give you a quick, a quick update. Comment and subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Have a good week. One more quick thing, guys. For those of y'all that are following the Firebird build, I've been doing a ton of work to that thing. Uh, I kind of just dropped off the map with that. I've been recording things. I just haven't been editing it, only because I've been focused on the Raptor. I've been working a lot. But I did a lot of stuff to this car. The interior is, like, completely redone. It looks freaking sweet. It looks like a brand new car. Um, I put new speakers in it, and I did sound deadening in the doors and stuff. Put a new head unit in it tonight. Worked on the uh, wiring harness and everything. And hopefully in the next couple days I'm going to be doing the motor work so that I can actually drive the car. But that's coming along too. And there will be videos on that. Like I said, right now I'm just focused on the Raptor. But yeah, I'll show you a couple quick um, pictures. I'll show you what, I, what I've been working on. So let me just open this up here. Can't really open up the door all the way in the garage because we'll hit this post. But I'll show you this door here. The door panels are all cleaned up too. They're all downstairs. But if you see behind this vapor barrier, that is sound deadener in there. Like Dynamat, it goes all the way along the door skin, all the way along the whole thing. Up here, I have Dynamat on the front of the door, of the door, not on the outer door skin. It is on the outer skin as well, though. I have it uh, double layered out to maybe here, and then a single layer that goes all the way across the door on the outer skin. And then here, like I said, these are new Rockford Fosgate speakers. Kind of like a good quality, low power speaker system, which is basically what I was going for. I don't want anything crazy. And then I siliconed behind this um, speaker insert. And there's another piece of Dynamat right behind the speaker. Just trying to get rid of all vibrations and everything and really silence up the doors. So that should do pretty nice once the door panel's on there to look good. And uh, the door panel looks like brand new, by the way. And I'm just going to show you this interior real quick. It's hard to see. I know it's dark in here. Now, when those door panels are on, it's going to look great. I'm going to do this other speaker here tonight. And uh, got all the stains and stuff out. That's just a quick preview of what this thing looks like. If you guys saw what it looked like when I got it, it was absolutely thrashed. But now it's all nice and clean. The dash is all clean and everything. Really coming up nice. I'm the second owner of this car. And uh, obviously, it really wasn't driven much. It's got 97,000 miles on it. But this thing is old. So yeah, guys, check it out. These videos will be coming up soon. Still got the paw prints on there, don't worry. See you guys in the next one. I also picked up some freaking sweet wheels. They're ZR1 wheels, 17s as opposed to the 16s that are on there. But these just look so much better and they're chrome too. And I got brand new tires. Check this out, man. 315s on the back, 275s on the front. I'm going to be doing some polishing to these. I'll probably have that in a future video because they need to be polished up. They're a little 
They're a little messed up. The front ones are in nicer shape, but these should clean up nice. And they're gonna look freaking sweet on there. And I'm also gonna be doing the brakes. I've drilled and slotted rotors, and I also am gonna paint the calipers. Really make the car look nice. Put a little bit of window tint on there, and do an exhaust system, and I'll pretty much call it a day. That's actually gonna be my, my daily driver. All right, guys, peace for real. Thank you.